Yeah, hello and welcome to my today's review of a Must HD M501H screen you can see here. To be honest, I planned to make this video now for a quite long while, a few weeks now. And it took a little bit longer because beside uh, the normal calibration process, um, testing the stability, the software features and so on, I also had to back check the interlaced compatibility. And this point I want to mention already, at, already here at the beginning because otherwise um, I'm just wasting your time. And as always, my videos are, um, yeah, are quite long, so um, if you don't have the time now, just watch it later, by the way, as always. Um, and the point is, um, the M51H screen isn't really working good with um, interlaced signals, especially a progressive segmented frame signals. I mean, I don't have a camera to test out the interlaced compatibility if you are recording interlaced internally. Um, but for example, um, I recognized the first time I plugged in uh, the M541H to one of my GH2s that the image isn't really clear. Um, the scaler, and I think it is the scaler, uh, is adding a lot of aliasing. Um, because of that, it's also producing a little bit of moiré. And um, for example, also the overlays are nearly unreadable. And um, I was really surprised because I also had 800 by 480 screens in the past, for example, from Marshall, the LCD 50, or the LCD 70 XP HDMI, I think it also was, or is a 800 by 480 screen. And I also had a Lilliput, um, not the 569, but uh, another model, I think. And yeah, so I had to back check this and I compared it to, for example, um, a Lilliput 569 I bought, uh, especially just for comparing it to the Must HD. Um, and yeah, so by the way, there is also a comparison video at the end of this uh, review. You can check it out. Um, I also put, as always, timestamps into the description. So you can also jump, for example, to um, the software part, to the calibration part, and for example, also to the comparison part. Yeah, and uh, to get back to this review, and uh, so I'm not talking too much, um, I compared it to the Lilliput and I can tell you um, it is like day and night because uh, the Lilliput is really producing a quite clear image. You can pull the focus without any issues and with the Must HD, don't get it if you can only output uh, interlaced signals. This is the case for GH2s, for example, for nearly every Nikon, um, although you can also modify it, uh, I think, with a Canon hack, uh, with an Icon hex. Um, also with Canon it's a problem, um, although um, sometimes I think it's even possible to output a, prog a progressive signal with Magic Lantern. Um, so take this, with, take this with a grain of salt, um, just test it out. Um, if your camera is capable of outputting progressive signals, it is usable. And I tested it also out with a GH4 and um, you can, or you should see now, a picture um, of a GH4. Um, yeah, I tested it out uh, a few minutes. Uh, I saw because I borrowed the GH4 from a colleague. And as you can see, the image is really clear. You also get, for example, very nice peaking overlays from the GH4 over the HDMI. And um, also the overlays are really easy to read. And also it's really, really nice to pull the, the focus with. So if you plan to get this screen for a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, which is only capable of outputting one-to-one um, -one internal, recording formats, for example, 23976p, 24p, 25p, 30p, and so on. Um, or for example, you, you plan to use it with a GH4 with progressive output, with the A7S with progressive output, or with any more modern camera, because um, all of the more modern cameras, with the exception of Canon, uh, yeah, uh, are normally capable um, of outputting progressive signals. So just check this out, because with progressive signals, this this monitor is a dream to use um, because, and this I can also um, already mention here, it's producing a very, very nice and clear image if you're feeding a progressive signal to it. And also the standard calibration is really, really nice, but um, I will um, come to this again um, within the calibration part. Okay, uh, so before I'm talking too much about um, all the side info, um, let's continue with the review. Um, before I show you the accessories, uh, though, I also want to mention there are two bigger models available from Must HD. This one is a 5-inch TN panel uh, edition or model, so it, it's not coming with very nice viewing angles, but the, the color accuracy, also uh, the reproduction of the darker areas are really, really, really good for a TN panel, so don't get me wrong, it's uh, still quite good. Just the viewing angles are not very nice and not that useful. So with the sunshade, for example, uh, you can only look from um, the front on it. So 
it's not that of a huge problem. Um, there are two bigger models, as mentioned, the M601H and the M701H. Um, it wasn't clear if the M601H is coming with an IPS panel. Um, yeah, lately they, they, they are writing on the Mustard HD side that it's coming with an IPS panel. So yeah, also the viewing angles are, are better uh, on the data sheet. So I also think it's coming with an IPS panel. Um, they both come, the M601H and the M701H are coming with 1280 by 800 resolution. But um, basically, um, the units are one-to-one -one the same. You always get uh, the same remote uh, feature, for example. You also um, get basically the same accessories, just the uh, inputs are a little bit different because here you only get HDMI and with the M601H and M701H, you are also getting component and composite inputs. And you also get telelight. Um, and for example, there's also a M701S model uh, available, which is also coming with SDI in and out. The huge pro is um, you're getting the higher resolution um, and for example, at least the M701H like this one here is also, uh, uh, so the M701H is also coming with an 8-bit panel, which is also quite nice. The M601H is on, only coming with a 6-bit panel. So if you have the money, just get or just go for the M701H or M701S. That's it now, finally. <laughs> um, as said at, at the beginning, I, I, I'm using timestamps. If you don't want to see the accessories now, just uh, use the timestamps, for example, to jump to the software features, to the calibration or to the comparison video. In between the uh, Lilliput 569 and uh, the M501H I'm reviewing here, uh, connected to a GH2. But now finally, <laughs> let's start with the accessories first. Um, the M501H is coming in, in a very nice box. There is a, an additional brown box inside, so it's really, nice and, and, and stable um, and it's also padded very well um, I have to say really nice um, by the way um, there's also an additional bag, uh, box around it if you order it directly from Must HD you also get a very nice um, manual by the way um, according with DC input um, it's uh, stating that it's 6 to 20 volts not only 12 volts by the way like stated here at the back I don't know if you can see it yes um, the point is, um, with this DC plug, uh, 2.5 uh, inner diameter, 5.5 outer diameter, you can easily use an external battery. Uh, for example, I'm using a central NPF battery, Sony NPF type battery, for powering my GH2s and the screen. So, um, especially if you want to keep uh, the weight as lightweight as possible, or if you want to keep the monitor as lightweight as possible, for example, if you plan to mount it on the uh, camera body, just go for an external battery. And you can use everything from 6 to 20 volts. Um, there's also a serial number here. I don't know if it's really important. Normally, I think they are giving one year warranty directly from MustHD. Though um, I also um, recommend to buy locally from, uh, not locally, um, directly from MustHD because um, then you, you can be sure that you're getting the newest firmware, you're getting the newest hardware revisions, and you're also getting a uh, full warranty. Um, you also get um, this nice remote, and th the remote is really unique, I have to say, because um, you can. Um, I use this very intensively, or I used it very intensively uh, as, as soon as I used the Master HD. Um, the nice point about this is you, you get three assignable but buttons. They are not that silent. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, so just press them, uh, yeah, very gently, so it's not uh, on your audio recording. I hope they uh, fix this in future with not standard foil type buttons because they are, are from scratch on or technology wise really loud. Um, by the way, also the buttons on the screen are quite loud, so um, yeah. <laughs> but um, I can live with it and I um, never had it on one of my audio recordings. Just try to keep this away from your mic, for example. Um, you can mount it very easily on, on a rig grip, for example. So for example, you're holding the rig and you can really uh, enable and disable features. For example, I use it to enable the pixel to pixel mode. I also have, I think, the freeze mode, freeze image mode on there so I can show someone um, how the, yeah, the scene is looking. And I also have the peaking um, on there. So for example, you can uh, switch in between the modes because there are also not peaking modes, uh, but over sharpening uh, focus assist modes you can switch through. And this is really unique. By the way, this is coming um, with a 3.5 millimeter plug. You can plug in here. 
Uh, as you can see really easy, you can also extend it uh, very far or quite far. Though uh, I recommend, uh, for example, I also use such normal standard 3.5 millimeter extension plugs. You just plug it in and extend it as far as you want and you can also use this for example, um, to mount this on uh, the arm of your fluid head, for example, which is also really nice because, for example, uh, I think nine of 10 times I never used the buttons on the screen. I always only used the function buttons on the remote. And so um, if you really plan to use this also on a, on a tripod handle, uh, get a 3.5 millimeter extension. You can also use this, for example, for, for mics or for audio purposes and yeah you're ready to, to shoot and you're also not wearing out this um, coiled cable that fast. So really really nice feature I have to say. Um, also included um, though not that long I only used it once um, it's an AC to DC adapter uh, which is also by the way um, changeable to international plugs um, if you um, order the additional ones for example for the UK or the US plugs or and so on this is the EU plug. Um, yeah it's nice that it's, it is included because it's also not uh, a standard everywhere. You're also getting a very nice HDMI cable, of just a, a micro HDMI to, uh, not micro, mini HDMI, sorry, to standard HDMI, not micro to standard HDMI. So if you're using an A7S, a GH4, I think also the Blackmagic Puck, um, they are all coming with micro cables. So um, I highly recommend just go for micro cables. It's also on the stiffer side, so um, just uh, go for a, a more, um, yeah, not light, but uh, a little bit thinner cable. If you need it for um, a GH4, for example, just get a new micro cable. There's also a ball head included, quite stiff and stable, though it's a standard China type ball head. Um, mentioned again here, um, if you really want to mount it on your camera, directly, um, this is by the way a, a, a quick release plate I'm using, it's not included, there are two uh, mounting points by the way, but um, if you want to use this directly on the camera use an external battery Just use the, the DC input and use external battery plate or use a smaller battery um, On here because otherwise it's getting way fast too heavy This is a common problem and I don't recommend to to use the NPF 970 battery together with this on a camera body But it's nice that it's included um, there are also uh, replacement screws included for, uh, I think, for the battery holder and this HDMI protector. Uh, here you can see it, it's a little bit weird lit here. <laughs> um, because uh, here and here um, are the same uh, better, uh, screw types and so you can, um, you also get replacement screws, which is also really nice. Uh, most important accessory is the sunshade, which is really nice because it's really stable and rugged. Normally I'm not that of a fan of uh, hard plastic sunshades because they're breaking easier than a cloth type ones, but this screen you can really throw in your bag, um, although I'm not the, <laughs> the guy to, which is doing that. But uh, yeah, you could do it. And uh, the nice thing is that it's also padded inside. So as you can see here, here's foam installed. So it's also not reflecting and you're getting a very nice uh, stable uh, sunshade. And it's also, by the way, more stable uh, than most of the Lilliput sunshades. At least um, I compared it to the 5D2 OP and this one is more stable. Um, it's very easy, by the way, to install this. Uh, here are two, two mounting points. Just slide this um, in the mounting points. Yeah, down, put it downwards or so uh, until it, it's, it's locked down. And now you can see it's it's in place and you're uh, ready to go. Now let's come uh, to the, the uh, monitor itself. Yeah, the monitor itself is also included. There are no batteries included, by the way. Um, you have to um, buy the right battery plate. There is, for example, the NPF 970 uh, or NPF battery plate in general, uh, which is quite nice um, because you can use NPF uh, 550, 750, 970, whatever you want to have. And um, I highly recommend to go to buy the Sony NPF plates if you don't have already a, a battery type at home. Now let's get to the, the screen directly. Um, as you can see here in front, we have um, our yeah, control buttons. We have the camera mode, which is for the uh, ca Canon bodies, especially the Canon 5D Mark II, for example. So you, you, um, you have uh, no dropout as soon as you press the, the rec button. Uh, 
Um, this is important, especially um, because um, normally uh, as soon as you, you are in standby, you're getting 1080i uh, output and as soon as you press record, uh, you're getting a 480p. And this camera mode always forces um, the screen to stay in 480p. So you don't have a dropout just for the guys out there who don't know why this uh, is necessary. You get the focus button, which is uh, to switch through the focus mode. Don't forget, you, you always get the option to uh, to specify one of the one of the buttons separately. So um, this these buttons you can uh, assign separately, and these buttons you can assign separately. Um, okay, this is for the focus mode. Uh, F1, F2, F3. You can long long press them to select with the selection wheel here a function, a new function. Um, you get the zoom. Though um, I highly recommend to, to use not the zoom mode, to use the pixel-to-pixel -pixel mode. Because with pixel-to-pixel, -pixel, um, it's just mapping the center of the image on the screen. And so you're, you're getting a one-to-one -one pixel reproduction, which is way sharper. With the zoom mode, um, on the other hand, you can zoom more uh, inside to the, to inside the picture, but it's it's getting mushy and and soft, and you, it's not helping. For example, if you want or if you need it to to set the focus point more accurately, so I highly recommend use the pixel to pixel mode on one of the function buttons, the internal ones or the external ones, and then you you get the menu button, and uh, this is a three way button, left, right, and press it for OK. Um, we have here a headphone out, which is quite nice if your camera is supporting um, a feed over the HDMI port. Um, yeah, uh, I think the bigger ones even support um, the audio feed over Zinj or, so, or one of their uh, analog audio inputs. But yeah, don't nail me down on that. Here we have um, the function key input for the external remote. Um, as said already, you can also use an uh, extension cable, standard 3.5 millimeter audio extension cable. Um, here at the back, uh, okay, top bottom, you're getting um, quarter inch uh, threads, so you can also mount it uh, on, to on top or on vice versa. Um, at the back is really important, you're getting a lockable uh, so screw down type battery plate, which is really, really, really nice because um, especially the Lilliput ones, you're just sliding the battery adapter plate in and the battery on and nine of 10 times you're you're removing the battery, battery adapter plate together with the battery. And here it's screwed down. It's also uh, very nice because uh, even if you don't screw it down, it's locked here on top. So if you want to remove it, you need to press this here. Also really nice is, for example, this uh, button here, um, which is quite nice because um, otherwise, um, yeah, the batteries are not locked down. They are all just locked down by, by sliding it in. And uh, for example, um, yeah, by this too, locking or holding mechanisms and so there is still a risk that the battery is falling out but here it's really locked down and you you can really remove the battery quite easy by uh, pressing this button here uh, working quite well i have to say though um at the beginning it was a little bit on the stiffer side because the plastic uh, also is a little bit uh, rough and uh, I, i'm also using cheap third-party batteries so yeah but it, it's a uh, really nice, a really nice mechanism. We, re we get uh, a hardware switch here for on off, which is really nice because other screens like, for example, the uh, Aperture VS2, they only have, a, a, yeah, not hardware on off. They have a kind of a software on off button because as soon as you input the battery, the Aperture, for example, is starting up. Here, it's not the case. You're not depleting the batteries um, as, as, lo as long as you um, put or let a battery in, let's say it that way. You get a DC input, a set already 6 to 20 volts, 2.5 inner diameter, 5.5 outer diameter. Uh, you get an HDMI out and an HDMI in. Um, there, in the past, there also was a, a normal edition without the HDMI out, um, but now you only get this edition here with the HDMI out, which is quite nice because it's working flawlessly. Um, I removed the lower um, locking mechanism because normally I, I don't use uh, the HDMI out that often. Uh, as you can see here, you also get a HDMI lock. Uh, I recommend to remove this here, for example, if it's not possible to um, lock down the cable because otherwise it's always, yeah, wobbling around and uh, yeah, it's not that nice to have it in there if it's not, um, yeah, in use. You can also let that lower part um, installed and just remove this one here, um, for example. So. Yeah, you have it in, uh, in your bag or so, for example, if you really need it. A really nice solution, I have to say. And yeah, 
that's it more or less. Um, open up, let's open up the sunshade again uh, so you can see uh, everything mounted and everything assembled. Um, okay, that's it with the introduction and with um, the included accessories. Now I will show you the software features and my calibration settings and so on. Okay, so let's start with the software part um, where I want to show you a little bit the menu structure, my calibration settings and also the features a little bit in detail. Actually, my second GH2 is connected, so you also recognize on the first glance that um, the overlays are really, really bad. And you can maybe also recognize uh, that, uh, yeah, the straight lines maybe on the, the roof here are so are not very straight uh, or for example on this cable here which is running uh, here uh, along. Um, yeah well as said already um, don't use it with interlaced signals uh, because it's really not working well with interlaced signals. If you jumped to this part here um, I also want to mention it again just use it for, or only use it with progressive output mode so um, check your camera if it's capable of outputting progressive modes because only then the screen is working really, really well and I highly recommend it with progressive signals. Uh, but let's start with a menu structure. As you can see here, um, you have a, a very nice, yeah, easy to, to uh, control and um, yeah, very well structured uh, interface. Um, first, I go here and I will make the duration always. Okay, so uh, otherwise the menu is, is um, is vanishing. Um, as you saw, I enabled uh, the menu with this button here. If you press it once, it's it's um, it's uh, yeah displaying the menu. If you press it twice um, or once again, it's re it's going away. If you uh, want to go inside one of the uh, of the menus, press this button here. If you want to get out, um, press again the menu button. Um, if you want to change something, press again the OK, and then you can really switch in between the settings, for example, of the color temperature here, for example. Um, but uh, I will start here on top. Um, I raised the brightness a little bit, by the way, a standard is 50. I also raised the chrome a little bit. Uh, according to my personal calibration, um, I can only assure you that this calibration is very good on a GH2, for example but um, it's, it's maybe not as good on, on other cameras, though I have to say the calibration is really good from scratch on, as mentioned already. Um, my changes are brightness 60, chroma 60 instead of 50 each. Sharpness you need to uh, pull down to zero um, with the over sharpening filter, aka focus assist, it's switching to 100, but um, in, in general, let it at zero. Um, vol volume I also, uh, lowered to zero because the GH2 isn't outputting uh, audio over, over the HDMI. You can use um, a higher volume for if you're using headphones, for example. The backlight I put to, to 90. Um, I always lower the backlight a little bit as, uh, as far as it's not starting to, to hum or so because then the backlight brightness also stays uh, at a high level uh, over a longer period of time. So it's not aging as fast. Um, I compensated it also partly because of a higher brightness, which uh, also helped to raise or to rise um, a little bit the darker areas uh, of the image. Um, here you can also uh, select uh, user settings, for example, your own settings or the, the original settings. Um, if you want uh, one of the original settings or if you want to use one of the original settings, use the 6500K or the 9300K. Um, I mean the 9300K is a little bit on the too cold side, the 6500 is nearly a little bit on the too warm side. Uh, though the difference in between my settings and the 6500K are not that huge as you see or as you can see. Um, I have also two different settings where I tried around a little bit. Uh, as you can see only the green is changing from 124 to 126. Um, this, these are my personal settings, 130, 126, 114, uh, with the bias at, uh, and of the red and green at the standard values. And I also, uh, first I also let the, the bias of the blue on the standard setting, 
but um, I had to raise it a little bit because I also compensated uh, more to the red so the overall image was matching better the output uh, of my GH2s and uh, also the general output by the way and I didn't test it only with my GH2s um, I only fine-tuned it uh, so I got a one-to-one -one reproduction um, and the bias um, is changing the dark areas of the image so for example uh, you're still getting black blacks and not light slightly um, yeah um, shifted to the red blacks and so you're compensating uh, according to that and it's really nice you can also try my second setting with green at 124 though it's not really necessary as um yeah the differences are quite minor um this screen by the way also has the same um yeah characteristic let's call it that way um, that if you're enabling blue gun mode uh, and you're disabling the blue gun mode again it's uh, resetting the red green and blue channels to 128 128 128 so um, only use the blue gun mode if you really need it uh, for calibration for example though it's not helping much because it's uh, changing the channels to 0 0 128 for example and um, yeah so just don't use the blue gun mode here like it was the case on the H056 it's all, it was also not that helpful. Um, now let's get to the function keys. Um, you can assign, as you can see, the internal function keys, F1, F2, F3, and you can also uh, trigger or tr tritch or, well, okay, the remote <laughs> function buttons separately, um, though I personally always uh, yeah, use the same settings. So for example, I know, uh, okay, actually I have a marker at, at the first, uh, the focus assist, uh, at the second and pixel to pixel at the third. Um, as mentioned again, um, or I want to mention it again, use pixel to pixel, not with zoom mode. Zoom modes are always too mushy, are not helping at all, pulling the focus. And the pixel to pixel you can all even uh, enable, for example, while you're shooting video on your on your shoulder, for example, because the pixel isn't magnified that extremely and you, you really get a one-to-one -one pixel reproduction. So you really can see am I in focus or not and the scaler isn't adding something or is removing uh, resolution or, or is removing or details are removed um, by the way uh, as you can see I also used as set um, the same settings externally here you can uh, switch through uh, for example let's start a pick mode uh, yeah okay pick mode I think this this is according to the calibration as, as I, I showed to you the user modes then the marker with the marker you can <clears throat> you can enable for example this here where you can see here uh, is a line added for the 16 to 9 image and you can also add for example stuff such as safety um, area and the middle cross um, stays enabled because you can no, okay, the middle cross uh, this doesn't stay enabled. I thought it stays. Uh, okay, this is the marker feature. Um, HV delay, yeah, you normally don't need. Um, it's uh, according horizontal vertical delay uh, of the image. Uh, the scaling mode, um, you can also switch through the um, scale modes. Uh, let's have a look um, at the scale modes and I need to use the internal ones now because I changed the internal one. As you can see, you can scale uh, the input four to three 235 to 1, which is quite important for many out there. Uh, okay, whoops, whoops, this was too fast. Auto 16 to 9, 4 to 3, 235 to 1, 185 to 1, 15 to 9, 16 to 10, and auto. And auto is always auto stretching to the full sc uh, screen mode. Um, by the way, um, a short hint the internal, not with the external buttons of the remote, with the internal buttons, always press it very shortly because otherwise you get a double click sometimes. Or it's not working at all. As you can see, and now, now it switched two times. You really need to press very short. Um, this is just a small issue or con, but uh, yeah, not that huge, I have to say. And um, yeah, especially because you normally, or I personally only use the external remote for the features, it's not a con for me. Uh, scan mode, okay, don't ask me what the scan mode actually does. Uh, okay, this is over, this is um, over scan, under scan, eh, what else? Um, so you can, for example, uh, scan in the image, so it's cr it crops, for example, the side uh, a little bit, but you're using uh, uh, more of the image. Okay, let's get to the next feature. 
uh, we have a scan. Uh, pixel to pixel mode is, I think, uh, not that uh, hard to explain. And I will show you uh, the next time I ex exit the menu with the, one of the buttons. Uh, freeze frame, yeah, you can also freeze the frame. So for example, it stays, uh, the image stays you have actually. So you can show it to your client, for example, if you're making an interview, for example, if you, he wants to, to look, how am I looking, um, and so on. Um, black and white mode, I normally don't use uh, that. Blue gun mode, don't use it because uh, use the calibration I showed you. Blue gun mode uh, is normally uh, internally, but here uh, it's the same with the H056. I don't know if it's even the same manufacturer, which is possible because there are quite uh, a lot of similarities. Uh, to the H056 version 2 screen. Um, because the blue gun mode normally is only internally, but here it's changing the RGB settings. Uh, black and white, as I said, is not that useful. Zoom, don't use it because, um, yeah, the image is too bad. False color mode, uh, yeah, I can show you with false color mode. First, uh, I want to show you the pixel to pixel. Um, yeah, you get a one-to-one -one pixel reproduction um, of your signal, um, which is helping because you uh, really see one-to-one -one what's what the sensor is also reading out and what the, ca what the camera is also recording the scaler isn't adding or removing something it's just cropping the image um freeze frame okay sorry this is now here oh now false color we have yeah, here now um you also get a false color mode um uh, which isn't really a false color mode i have to say and you see again um if you press very short it's it's reacting as it should if you press a little bit longer it makes two times selection uh, so don't use the internal buttons i just use this, these buttons here i don't know if it's only uh, the case by the way of the, the 501 or, or if it's also the case with the 601 or 701 but yeah as said just use the remote and you're happy um, the point of a false color normally is to see uh, where am i according my exposure but the problem is you don't get any an indicator at the side. You also don't get any indicator, I think, in the menu. I check it out uh, quickly. And here the problem is also, um, it's more ha more like the micro color mode. Uh, of, no, it's, there's nothing in the, in the uh, manual. Uh, it's like the micro color mode on the H056. And I, I can uh, tell you this is helping, for example, if you are shooting in a very, very dark environment, because it's uh, pushing all the colors and all the, co the color information to a higher brightness level. And I, I mean, um, I, I, it's a little bit of a misuse of a, a false color mode, but as it's not a false color mode really, um, yeah, or it's not usable as a false color mode really, um, I think it's okay to use it for such purposes because, for example, if you are in a dark environment and you want to pull the focus, just enable this uh, false color mode. Um, and if you enable this, you, you, you see way more where am I. You can also frame way easier. I use it quite often, to, to, to be honest, especially, for example, if you're um, shooting in theater situ situations or concert situations, for example, where it's uh, from scratch on quite dark. And especially if you need to, to focus manually, it's really, really helpful. Uh, okay, now stay off. <laughs> uh, let's get to the next feature. Oops, 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 oops. Here, here, here. Okay, uh, exposure. Um, it's also not that helpful because exposure mode is... Uh, yeah, okay. The exposure mode is uh, the same like on the H056. Um, it's starting way too early. Um, it's not, not starting at 70, 80, 90 IRE or so. It's starting at 60 or so. I think it was 60. So don't use this. Um, it's not helping at all. Oh, Oop. okay. But at least uh, the other features are normally working quite well. Uh, focus, I can show you because I have assigned it already at the F2. Uh, camera mode, as I said, this is the same as here. Um, you can also assign it to one of the function buttons or to the remote, for example, um, for the 5D Mark II, for example. So it's a forced to stay in 480p. Um, then, we, okay, we are through. Uh, let's, yeah, put this back to the, uh, 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 to the marker. Um, by the way, really important is, um, 
yeah, okay, you can also enable them the, uh, yeah, constantly. Uh, really important is to have um, all the overlays of the features, and this is uh, uh, just because of the firmware is written that way, um, always yeah, switch the duration to five seconds or so, for example. If you or use the screen, don't let it uh, at uh, infinity or at always, because, uh, for example, um, let's enable the, yeah, the crosshair or the safety marker. And for example, if you want to enable the, the pixel to pixel, uh, if you, uh, you can see here at the left, at the, at the bottom, after five, second, it, uh, five seconds, it's gone. But now let's change to infinity or to always, let's say it that way. The problem is that, for example, it's, it's now showing always pixel to pixel. And you, you can see the, the, the overlay, the, the uh, crosshair and, and safety area and so on overlay isn't showing anymore. And this is really annoying because um, it, it seems like it's connected to this timer. So yeah, for now I let it at always, but yeah, don't use the always mode if you plan to use the remote or as, uh, in general. You can also, uh, by the way, set the language, but though there are only uh, Chinese and English and France, I think. Um, oh, okay, let's check English. Oh, Deutsch, yeah. Okay, For, uh, France, uh, Spain, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, Russian, maybe. Uh, Portuguese, uh, Chinese, English. Okay, um, yeah, but I normally let it at English because also um, there are no uh, translation errors and yeah here you can also set the, the transparency so you can also see behind the menu though I normally let it at low or at off at low you see a little bit at least or and at off you get the best contrast you can also set a uh, reset the system you can also update the software at least there is a menu point like on the H056 by the way I forgot to mention there's also a USB port here at the bottom um, uh, but the point is there are no software updates till now. Um, MasterHD wrote uh, a few weeks ago, months ago, that they plan to update the software according to uh, the features which are now also within the M701S model, the STI 7-inch model, like color peaking, histogram, movable pixel to pixel, and so on. And um, yeah, but till now there nothing happened. Um, I mean, uh, maybe now, it's uh, it's the case. Just check out mustachd.com. Uh, according to the battery, uh, here at the bottom you can also check um, the battery status. Um, it's from low, middle to high. Um, I would love to see an external indicator, for example, somewhere in the middle here, or so with a percentage or with a battery symbol at least with with three steps or with five, six, eight steps or so. You, so you can also see what your battery status is or maybe even a voltage indicator because for example I personally know my batteries are depleted around 6.5, 6.4 volts and so you can also use your batteries uh, to the max. Okay this was the lowest menu now let's check out uh, the general feature menu you can uh, as you see switch the, the picture mode uh, the designed mode you, you assigned here first you can yeah change the markers. For example, um, you can enable them, disable them with open, off, open, off. <laughs> uh, you can also enable uh, the center marker. You can um, yeah, change the color marker, the color of the marker. You can also change the marker type 4 to 3, 235 to 1, 185 to 1, 16 to 10, 16 to 9. So yeah, and normally I let it at 16 to 9 uh, if I shoot with my standard settings. Um, but you can also, for example, um, mark uh, 185 to 1 or 235 to 1 aspect ratio if you want to crop later. Okay, uh, this was the menu. Um, I hope uh, I showed you everything. Uh, as mentioned already, um, again, use the remote um, if, you, if you want to control features because the buttons here are really not that nice. Um, according to the remote, um, use the settings you always need. Uh, for example, I have uh, the, the markers here because, for example, I want to enable and disable them sometimes. 
um, the focus modes. By the way, the focus modes I never showed you. Um, this is the first mode. Um, it's not like a, a focus peaking. It's more of an over sharpening filter. Um, it's just switching the sharpness to 100%. So you you see uh, you see a, a white outline on high contrast areas because of a way too over sharpened image. Uh, it's really nice on low contrast objects, but uh, especially for example in this scene here, uh, wide angle scene with a very um, high aperture value because of a bright um, yeah image. Um, it's not helping that much. Um, by the way. This is uh, a combination, the second mode of the microcolor mode together with the over sharpening mode. So especially, for example, as I told you before, uh, if you use the false color, aka microcolor mode, um, or the mode 2 here with the with over sharpening still enabled, you can also pull the focus way easier in darker scenes. And it's more or less only usable in, this, uh, in such, such situations. Uh, Pixel to pixel, yeah. Uh, okay, this was, um, as you can see, after five seconds, it's switching back. And okay, I now have kind of, no, I don't have overlays enabled. Okay, this was the, the um, second part. Um, I hope I showed you everything. Um, now you, sh you should see, or you will see, let's say that way, a clip I made um, about two weeks ago, uh, a comparison clip in between the Lilliput 569 and the Mustard HDM 51H. So, yeah, okay, let's watch this one. Okay, so now I want to show you a little bit the differences in between uh, the Mustard HDM 501H on the right side, you can see now, compared to a Lilliput 569HY, however it's called, the older model from Lilliput. Uh, so not the uh, most actual OP model, this is the 569 produced um, at the beginning of 2012, uh, version 7, uh, the firmware's version 7. So you have a little bit of a comparison, for example, how it's, it's maybe looking with a, a capable screen or with interlaced compatible screen, let's say it that way. Um, to be precise, I'm feeding um, both screens with uh, a 1080i 60i uh, signal from my second GH2 and um, I'm feeding the HDMI signal through the Must HD screen, which is working like a charm and yeah, which is quite nice to have, which isn't the case with a Lilliput because you especially need to buy the O models to get HDMI out, by the way. Um, but as you can see already, um, uh, the image on the Lilliput is way clearer. And especially, for example, let's have a look at the have the overlays, for example, which are a little bit of a mess, as you can see here at the bottom or on top here. You can also see, for example, the aliasing patterns, which is a, which which is the problem. I think it's adding a lot of aliasing because of the downscaling from 1080i to 800 by 480 resolution. And you also see, for example, uh, these blotchy um, roofs uh, here at the back, for example, or which is also really really a mess. Is for example, as soon as you're moving the camera you're getting um, more ray patterns. And the problem is, for example, here you can see it, or you can see them. And the problem is, for example, you're shooting interviews or so, and you need to know, is there any more ray on my, my uh, footage, on my final footage? And if you're, uh, only get, if you're getting um, more ray only because of the external screen, this is not usable, at least for me personally, because, um, for example, with the GH2s, you also, you also get more ray patterns from time to time. But um, you then need to change cloths or you need to, to use an, uh, another filter, for example, which is softening up uh, everything a little bit. So you are compensating it also a little bit. And it's no use, for example, to use the Must HD screen um, with an interlaced signal because you, never, you can be never sure is, the, is there any more ray from, coming from the screen or from the camera. On the other hand, for example, and I'm moving the camera a little bit again, as you can see, uh, yeah, you're also getting this weird flickering on straight lines, not only moray patterns on finer structures, but the point is here. Now let's check out the Lilliput uh, image. Uh, as you can see, uh, the overlays are clear uh, here, here. This line uh, you, you saw um, before, which was blotchy, or let's move back again. As you can see here, it's really blotchy. Uh, it's straight, uh, also the, the roofs at the back are straight. Um, for example, also look again at uh, this structure here and on, on this small gray structure, um, there is no moray anymore. And 
this is really, really, really nice to use um, with a GH2 because you can really be sure the image is the one-to-one -one representation um, according the sharpness, according to the moray patterns. Okay, so now you um, know um, about the differences or you know how the Lilliput um, looked and how uh, the image could look with an uh, interlaced compatible screen, which is uh, connected to a GH2. Well, um, do I recommend it? Um, yes, if you have a progressive signal camera. No, if you have interlaced signal camera. Yes, if you, if you like the oversharpening filter. No, if you really need and want to have a peaking filter on your screen. Don't forget, if you're a GH4 user, you can uh, enable the overlays um, over the HDMI. So, for example, you also get the blue, green, yellow, whatever you choose, color, which color you choose, peaking uh, overlay over the HDMI of the GH4. And um, when is the screen maybe also not perfect for you? For example, if you need um, a really good a false color mode if you need a histogram because this is only coming with a newer firmware with the actual firmware it's not implemented this uh, firmware, uh, uh, firmware this histogram here is coming from the gh2 for example um, it's nice if you need a screen um, which is as lightweight as possible as small as possible as affordable as possible and uh, if you want a screen which is which is really producing a very very nice and accurate color um, and also really nice dark areas for a TN panel screen uh, for a good price. And for example, if you need a small screen for a, um, for a slider, for a steady cam, for a shoulder rig where um, a big bulky screen is just not usable or um, it's not as nice to use such a huge bulky screen on it. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, by the way. Um, if you want to search to check out alternatives, um, if you uh, use an interlaced signal camera, check out the Lilliput 569. Though it's not supporting, the 569 is not supporting a 24p, 25p and 30p progressive signals, the Must HD does. Um, so if you uh, buy a 569, um, just check out a used one. For example, I bought mine for 70 bucks or so. Um, and uh, yeah, so don't forget or don't oversee that the 569 isn't future-proof um, according progressive signals. Okay, uh, that's it more or less. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Subscribe. Um, there are coming other videos in the future. I don't mention now anything because, uh, which is coming because, um, yeah, I don't know when I will have time to make the videos. Stay tuned. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching. Bye.